This is currently just south of River Falls, just north and west of Ellsworth. And if you're in the red polygon here, that's where the warning's for, or anywhere in this blue cone, make sure you're ready to take shelter immediately. If you're in this red box, you should be in your safe place right now. I mentioned how much more humid it is to the south, but you can see for yourself here, those dew points are sitting in the 70s. Nothing like what we've experienced today. So that's the difference the high pressure system to our north is making for us right now. If this were winter, we'd be talking about some bitter cold, but luckily it's summertime, so it helps us out. For anyone who watches regularly, you know I'm a big numbers guy, and of course I've got the stats on this. That's 20 straight days of below average weather. Some of these lines we're seeing and some of these brighter spots among the generally red area on our radar, that signifies areas where there may be some small hail. So uh, right now we're looking at one spot between Waterville and Mondovi. No, I'm not showing the forecast from yesterday. This is tonight. Very similar to yesterday. Temperatures falling to the 70s and eventually through the 60s. And one thing about the snow too, ready? I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick some up real quick and you'll notice that, I mean, it's, it's no problem making it into a snowball. This is very heavy, wet and sticky snow. And certainly uh, camera guy wanted me to throw it to him. Here, I'll make a pass. Aaron Rodgers right here. <laughs> it's easy to make snowballs with this snow. A tornado warning has just been issued for southeastern Eau Claire County. You can see this red box includes Augusta and areas just north of Fairchild. We generally see these tropical remnants stay further south and east if they even make it into the U.S. at all. So this event, very unusual and uh, certainly seeing a lot of rain out here, Zach. One of the questions I think is, am I gonna miss out on anything by staying inside? So I'll, I'll give you that uh, perspective in the forecast. And there will be sun tomorrow, so we might miss out on some sun, but with the cooler weather, the breezy conditions, and even a chance for some showers in the evening, I'm gonna say no, don't feel guilty by staying inside if that's what you so choose. Beyond that, this storm makes its way out and will continue in the areas shaded in blue for about the next hour, reaching Medford, Loyal, uh, those areas by about 11 p.m. As it moves so slowly, it's gonna dump a ton of rain in the Mobile, Alabama area, and some of those locations could pick up two feet of rain, if not a little bit more. You can see that wind, just the transport of warmer air into Wisconsin. We call that warm air advection in meteorology. So maybe a new term to take home with you. Now, your Skywarn 13 weather forecast. One year ago today, we had seven inches of snow on the ground, which compares to just two inches on the ground right now. So far this year, we've had a little under 13 and a half inches, which puts us four and a half below our average to this point. And since November 1st, we've had just under five inches of snow since November 1st, guys. That means most of this snow fell in October, which is just wild. I mean, we really haven't had winter, at least snow-wise, since the start of November, but also temperature-wise, too. Here's a look at our coldest nights so far we've had uh, this year. I mean, we've only had one night that's been below zero, two nights that were actually at zero. And on average, in any given year, between December 1st and today, January 8th, our average coldest temperature, instead of negative two, would be negative 17. Can you believe that? We have been just absolutely mild, no snow, and very quiet here so far this winter. I mean, the numbers go to show it, and certainly, if you've been keeping up with the weather, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And tonight just really sums it up perfectly. I mean, we have gray skies once again, these temperatures only falling into the mid-teens, you're wondering where winter is, I'm wondering the same thing, but we may have to wait a little bit longer if you like that winter weather for it to catch up. However, I do have some other positive news in the forecast, which we'll get into coming up. Tonight is a bit gray though, still we are seeing those clouds overhead. Our satellite doesn't pick up on them as well at night, but they are spread out across all of western Wisconsin right now. And you can kind of see the clouds here on our sky cam looking over Phoenix Park. It is 26 right now. On a normal night, I'd probably be talking about temperatures in at least the mid-teens at this point. Wind is calm as well, so we don't get that wind chill factor. High pressure is spread out across the upper Midwest and southern Canada, and it's keeping things dry in the upper layers of the atmosphere. That's why we haven't really seen any precipitation, but we still have moisture in the lower levels, and that's why those clouds still spread out across part of the upper Midwest. But our weather is remaining quiet as a whole. We also have a weak northerly flow of air, which should cool us down into the teens, as you saw in the planner tonight, but otherwise nothing really dropping our temps too much. Looks like there is a little bit of clearing in central Wisconsin. That's why those temperatures are a little bit lower. 
We could get a few breaks in the clouds here, and that's why we may drop into the mid-teens in western Wisconsin, but nothing significant tonight, though I do expect us to start tomorrow off in the mid to upper teens and eventually reach the mid to upper 20s during the day. As far as the skycast goes, we've all been looking for more sun. Here's what I'm expecting. I, I do think clouds are going to dominate, but I think there will be some sun that pokes through at times during the day. And then on Sunday, that's when things really get better. Still some clouds in the sky, but a nice blend of sun coming in there as well. So improvement on the way, but not just in the sun. How about these temperatures? I mean, we're talking about what should be about the coldest time of the year here in, well, getting into central, uh, the middle of January. And yet we have a week full of 30 degree highs. In fact, yeah. maybe mid thirties on Wednesday. <laughs> so I'll, I, I'll wow. take this weather, even if we're not getting the snow, you know, I like the active weather, but to mm -hmm. be in the thirties this time of year, absolutely beautiful. I agree. Thank you so much, Tucker. Hey everyone. Hope you're excited for today's Tested with Tucker experiment because this one is my all time favorite experiment and uh, it's just, it's super cool and you can do it at home too. And it also has applications to weather. So uh, you pretty much check every box for me. And uh, I think you're really going to love this one because, well, you'll see. Anyway, so I don't really have a lot here. It's just uh, a box of matches. So it might be good to have an adult doing this one. Um, I have paper, any kind of paper. You just really need it to burn. And I have eggs, which uh, any hard boiled egg works. And you only need one, but Sometimes it takes two tries, so we'll see how we do here. But essentially what we're going to do is we're going to try to get an egg to go inside this bottle. Now I'll show you if I put it on top, I can't, I can't even push it in and it, uh, it, it doesn't go in. It's a little bit too big and uh, it doesn't seem like there's any way to really get it in. But of course, uh, we're going to use some science to find a way around that problem. Now I can't think of any real world, world applications where you're trying to get an egg into a bottle, but uh, I can say that what you're going to see here does relate to what happens in the environment all the time. And uh, before we get into the experiment, I just want you to remember these two things that warm air rises and expands. So as you heat air, it's going to rise up and it's also going to spread out as it warms up. Cold air does the opposite. It sinks and contracts. So if you have a cold air mass, it's going to sink down towards the surface and get smaller. Those particles are going to get closer together. And we see this in weather all the time. Again, warm fronts, well, they rise and expand. That's actually how we get storms, too. You have warm air from the surface, which rises up and expands, and you get clouds and storms. Meanwhile, cold air does the opposite. In fact, uh, yesterday, actually Monday, I can't remember the date, but let me check. Monday, the 20th, um, we had some thunderstorms that came through, and those storms really produced very strong winds because what we had was colder air evapor or we had evaporation cooling air and as that air came down towards the surface it cooled sunk contracted and then spread out very quickly creating strong winds so uh, again this has very real world applications to weather but enough of the science we'll get into the experiment the main attraction so essentially i'm going to start with just putting some paper in here and uh I have actually tried this on a rainy day before in a room that had windows open and it didn't work because the air was too moist for the paper to light, but uh, we will probably not have that issue here given that in our studio we don't actually have any windows and the air feels pretty dry. It's winter too. Um, so now, actually let me put another piece in. Now that we have our paper in there, I'm just going to light a match, drop it in. Again, this is the part that sometimes takes a few tries because you just, you need the paper to light. Um, but we'll see how it goes and hopefully my match lighting skills are not like they were a few years ago because again the last time I tried this it took me like 10 matches but uh, wish me luck here we go all right oh wow look at that perfect all right now we're going to put the egg on top of the bottle <laughs> pretty quick but pretty awesome right <laughs> so that happened really fast but uh, you might be wondering, all right, wait, how did that work? Because the last time we tried this, also might be a little smoky. Last time we tried this and I tried to push the egg in, it, nothing happened. It didn't work at all. Well, again, science really does the work for us here and helps us out.